this is me, Saipa. I will come here to iterative methods of determining the roots of equations, still numerical methods. Here yeah, we're going to look at uh, different methods that we use to determine the iterative formulas. Some of them we've already covered them, interpolation and extrapolation. We've covered trapezium rule. Uh, now we are in the iterative formulae or the iterative methods. And we are going to begin with the Newton Rafton method NRM and uh, uh, these were two men who combined to come up with this uh, algorithm that we are going to look at. So it states that if x n is approximate or is an approximation to the root of the equation f x n is equals to zero, then x n plus one, which is our root, will be equal to x n minus f of x n over the derivative of x n over the, the derivative of the function where n is zero up to. Uh, uh, many numbers as you can uh, think of. Now, this formula that I've written here is what we call the newton rafton iterative formula for approximating the root of the equation uh, f of x is equals to zero. One may need to know how that comes about. So let's, uh, let's do some proof of it. Let's do some proof of it. Okay, now uh, to prove this, we plot a graph. We plot a graph of fx. Uh, with x. Okay, so we plot a graph and um, we assume, we're going to assume that after putting this graph, you're going to attain a curve, which curve is like that. So at any point on the curve here, we shall have our root xn here. And uh, here, my coordinate means it would be xn, you can use xi, so it will be xn f of xn. Then here, of course, we have xn, and here is my zero. Uh, now, here comes a situation whereby you will need to draw a tangent on this point on the curve, and draw a tangent. Maybe this is my tangent. Where this tangent passes on the x-axis, this point is xn plus one. So you can keep drawing the tangents and you will realize that as you keep drawing the tangents, they'll keep extending this side, xn plus two, xn plus three, xn plus four, something like that. So uh, here we've got our tangent and that is a xn plus one. Now, I'm assuming that here is, a, is maybe angle theta or angle phi, but we may not bring it out in terms of angles, okay? May not bring out in terms of angles, but instead we're going to bring it out in terms of gradients. Okay, the slope, okay? The slope is the tangent at that very point. So we can get the gradient or which people, or which one can call the tan. And that tan will be the gradient, the tangent will be the gradient of the function will be the gradient of this line, okay? So the gradient of this line would be, uh, of course we get change in y, change in x. So here we shall have, here the point is xn, uh, xn then zero, xn plus one then zero. So it is going to be f of xn, look at it as y and look at this one as x. So change in y, which is f of xn minus zero at this point over here it will be xn minus xn plus one so that is <clears throat> that is my tangent or my slope so now at this one is going to reduce to f of xn over xn minus xn plus one. Now, at this tangent, at this point, 
Let me call it point P. At point P, um, the gradient is equal to the derivative, okay, of the function. So the gradient or the tangent will be equal to the gradient of f of x. So now it would mean that at point P, the tangent which we've called the derivative, so it is going to be f prime of x n is equal to the gradient, which is f of x n out of x n minus x n plus one. We, you may not be required to prove this, but uh, for purposes of understanding, you can know it. So we shall call smart pry and we work on the expansions. If we call smart pry, we're going to have x n minus xn plus one into the derivative of xn, we should be equal to f of xn. So this is going to be xn, f prime of xn minus xn plus one, then f prime of xn. This one will be equaling to f of xn. Our aim is to make f of xn the subject. So we shall have xn plus one times f prime of xn is equal to xn f xn minus fxn. So our aim is to make xn plus one the subject. So our xn plus one is going to be equal to xn f prime xn minus fxn divided by f prime xn. And this one will give us xn plus one <clears throat> is equal to, uh, this is divided by this, then this one also divided by this. So it is going to be xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn. So this is the Newton Raphson iterative formula. So you're going to see how we use this formula to work on other, to get the, to approximate the roots. We are going to look at how we approximate the roots using this or employing this iterative formula. So allow me drive you directly to examples. Let me drive you the electric examples. Uh, <clears throat> Use number one, use Newton Raphson iterative formula. Let me use NRM to show that the tube root the number n is given by a third to x n plus n over x n squared 
has taken x naught as 2.5. Determine a tube root of 10, correct to three decimal presses. Uh, this one here is something very easy, something very, very, very easy. And uh, we can just want us to use the Newton Raphson method to show that the tube root of a number or the iterative formula is this. Now, let's let x to be equal to the tube root of that number. When we chuck both sides, we shall have x cubed is equals to n. Implying that our equation would be x cubed minus n is equals to zero. So meaning that if we let our f of x equaling to x cubed minus n, our derivative of x is going to be 3x squared. Because n being a constant, we don't differentiate it. Meaning that our f of xn, otherwise you would have come with xn, is x cubed n minus 3. And our derivative of x n is 3xn then squared. So looking at all this, uh, looking at all this, we shall say, of course, we are using xn plus one is equal to xn minus f of xn out of f prime of xn. So it would imply that our xn plus one is equal to xn minus the function with brackets function is x cubed n minus n then out of the derivative, which is three x squared n. <clears throat> Looking at this, we shall take the LCM. And the LCM is three x squared n, three x squared n, when you divide it here, which is going to become three x cubed n. So we shall have three x cubed n. Then we open the brackets minus x cubed n, then plus n over three x squared n. This is when reduced three x cubed minus x cubed, it's going to be two x cubed n plus n then out of three x squared n. Having this would imply that uh, one can factorize out a third as told because we had to factorize out a third so here one can quote the final answer if you don't want to waste time because if you factorize out a third, still it's going to be equal to a third into um, two x n plus n out of x squared n for n is equals to zero, one, two, and other terms. So that is what we are having as our iterative formula. Two, um, they told us that hence taking x naught, now let me do that one on the other, on the fresh side. We are having, we are taking x naught as 2.5 and then uh, by looking at that, the number is 10. They wanted to find the tube root of the number. And as you can see, since they said that tube root then 10 means that the number was 10. So the value of N is 10. 
So uh, it means that taking these, we shall get our x1, which will be, we shall be substituting in that formula. We shall substitute x as 2.5, whatever, then plus 10 over 2.5 squared. I normally encourage students, if you are good at using your calculator, you can type that formula, uh, even though you don't put N, but you just put X, you type it in your calculator as a third into everything the way it is written because X is there on a calculator. Then you start, you press shift solve, you start entering the values, the values as you get answers. But here in a paper, I need to see you substituting, but in the other calculator of yours, you can do the conversions. So this one here, the value will be 2.2. Now we need to get the error. We need to get the error. So if you get the error, the error will be 2.2 minus 2.5. Which will be 0 0.3. And this is less than, or rather, this is greater than, since they want you to record the answer in three decimal places, it means that the error is 0 0.0005. So this one is still greater than this, meaning that you have to carry on the, you have to carry on other iterations. So we shall get x2, x2 will be equal to a third into two. Now we shall use our x as this what we've just gotten 2.2 plus 10 over 2.5, everything squared. And this one shall give you um, 2.15537. And this one takes you to error two. When you take the error, we are testing for convergence, eh? right? So in this particular case, when you check that, when you check for the error, it is going to be 2.15537 minus 2.2, shall subtract 2.2. And uh, this particular case will give you 0 0.04463, which is still greater than the error we are interested in. So implying that you have to carry out the third iteration, but using this as your root. So we shall carry out the third iteration, which will be a third. We keep sub, uh, substituting in the formula. That's why I told you that if you had put in the calculator, you can just be substituting. So it is going to be a third into two and uh, 2.15537. Then plus 10 over 2.15537. Then squared. Of course, working on this will give you 2.15443. So this one will give you the third error as 2.15. Um, 2.15443 minus 2.15537. This one will give us the error of 0 0.000, 000 94, which is still greater than 0 0.0005. So meaning we shall carry out the fourth iteration but in our fourth iteration, this one will work as the value of X. So it is going to be a third into two, 2.15443 plus 10 over 2.15443 squared. So this one worked on is going to give you the value as 2.15443 is our X for implying that our ELA is 2.15443 minus 2.15443, which is equal to 0, 
that is less than 0 0.005, implying that the tube root, after getting the error as zero, the tube root of 10 is 2.154, correct to three decimal places. So here you're told to first work on the, not first prove the formula after proving the formula, then you go ahead, you go ahead in calculating other values. So that is how simple it can be done. That is how simple it can be done. However, there can be very many examples. We shall do the ones we can, shall do the ones possible. Um, let me do another question. Two. Uh, show that so that the neutron of the method of finding the root of the equation. Trix cubed Trix squared, sorry, Trix squared minus that is but a minus six X minus three is equals to zero is given by xn plus one is equals to two xn squared plus three out of four xn minus six and part b show that The positive root so that the positive so that the positive root of the equation two x squared minus six x minus three is equal to zero lies between. Three and four. Full stop. Find the root. Correct to two decimal places. Correct to two decimal places. Okay, so at the first one, A, uh, our function of X is given, because they want the formula, so we have to derive it. So A, our function is 2X squared, let me call it FX of N, 2XN squared minus 6XN minus three. Its derivative will be four, then xn minus six. All right, so using the Newton Ruffin method, we know that xn plus one is equal to xn minus f of xn out of f prime of xn. So it's going to be xn minus f of xn, which is two xn squared 
minus 6xn minus 3 out of its derivative 4xn minus 6. So just simplify that by taking the LOCM. The LOCM is 4xn minus 6. You can apply here. So it's going to be xn into 4xn minus 6, then minus 2xn squared plus 6xn plus 3, everything over 4xn minus 6. Expanding, this is 4xn squared minus 6xn minus 2xn squared plus 6xn plus 3, everything over 4xn minus 6. 4x squared minus 2x squared, that is 2x squared n minus 6 plus 6, that is 0, then plus a 3 out of 4xn minus 6, and that is the value required. So that's what we are having. Then part B, they want us to show that the positive, the positive root of the equation, that one, lies between 3 and 4. Then we find the root. So we need to see if they say the root lies between 3 and 4. So for part B, you will first write for last the function. And the function was um, 2x squared minus 6x minus 3. So if they say that it lies between 3 and 4, first look for f of 3. We call it the sign change method. So here we use the sign change method. If you put f of 3, it will be 2 into 3 squared minus 6 into 3 and minus 3. And this one will give you negative 3. Then if you put f of 4, it is going to be 2 into 4 squared minus 6 into 4 then minus 3, which will give you positive 5. So you can see that there is a sign change. Now, since there is a sign change between the two values, hence the root lies between 3 and 4. You have to put for last that conclusion that since there is a change between the two values, then the root lies between 3 and 4. But they want us to afterwards calculate or to find the root. Now, to find the root, of course, between these three, you have to pick the one to work as uh, between these two values. You need to pick uh, between three and four. Since the root lies between these, we need to pick which one to go with as our initial approximation. So since you can easily tell that f of three, which is equals to negative three, is nearer to zero because the function for a root, the function must be equaling to zero. So since f of three, is nearer to zero than f of four. Therefore, we shall set our x naught as three. And if we have our x naught as three, it means that our x one, now we substitute in the other derived formula, which is uh, our xn plus one with live data as uh, 2xn squared plus 3 over 4xn squared, 4xn, then minus 6. So we shall substitute until we get convergence. Since they want us to put into decimal places, then it means that our error will be 0 0.005. So our x1 is going to be equal to, when we substitute x0 into this, it's going to be Um, it's going to be two x. So we shall be substituting into this. So we shall have two into x, which x is a three, then squared plus three out of four into x, which is three, then minus six. You get the value, you relate it with the error. By me saying that two decimal places, it means that the error is 0 0.005.
So you'll keep checking for convergence until there is no convergence. So, um, I'm going to do some more numbers about this so that we get it clearly well. I'm going to do some numbers so that we get it clearly well. The main challenge which students face or meet is getting that formula. Since some of the functions may be hard that to differentiate and you find the students getting some issues with uh, with the, the formula. Okay, so let's first have this also, then maybe we see what follows. Show that the equation Uh, so that the equation 3x squared plus x minus 5 has a root between x is equals to 1 and x is equals to 2. That is a b. Use linear interpolation. To find the first approximation. For this route to two decimal places, C using Newton Rafton method twice, find the value of this route, collect to. Two decimal places. The first part is very okay because we are going to use sign change. So uh, for part A, if you see our f of x is 3x squared plus x minus 5, it means that uh, since it is lying between 1 and 2, so f of 1 into one squared plus one minus five. This will give you negative one. Then f of two will be three into two squared plus two minus five, which is going to give you positive nine. Now one can conclude since the sign change, then the root lies between one and two, or one can say since f of two is greater than zero, and f of one is less than zero, then the root lies between one and two. Then they say, use linear interpolation to find this root. Now for part B, as we use linear interpolation, we shall have the values of x and then the function of x. Mm -hmm. If it is lying between one and two, then it means that, uh, the root is here, we don't know it, but at the root, the function should be equal to zero. Then at x, we have one, when x was one, we, the function was negative one, when x was two, the function was nine. So now working on this, working on this to get the value of x naught by using linear interpolation, we say that if this is a, B, C, the gradient of A, B is equal to the gradient of A, C, meaning 
2 minus 1 over 9 minus negative 1, which is plus 1, is equaling to x naught minus 1 over 0 minus negative 1, which is 0 plus 1. So this is 1 over 10 is equal to x naught minus 1 over 1. This will be give you 1 when you cross multiply is equals to 10 x naught minus 10. And when you bring a minus 10, this side will be 11 is equals to 10 x naught. By solving that, you'll get your x naught as 1.10 to two decimal places as told. So now having this initial approximation as 1.10, by using newton raphson we can evaluate, we can evaluate the value. We can evaluate the value. One can use two alternatives. One can, uh, one can, use two alternatives after getting this, to use newton raphson twice, meaning one can first derive an equation or one can do when they have not derived the equation. But the simplest one is when one has used the equation because that is what students come up being adapted with. So now here, what you do, first derive the equation because you're having f of x and bring part c having f of xn and f of xn is 3x squared n plus xn minus 5. So the derivative is 6xn plus 1. So from xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn over the derivative of xn. Um, our root is going to be xn minus f of xn, which is 3xn squared plus xn minus 5 over 6xn plus 1. So this one can be the same as xn. If you take the LCM, 6xn plus 1 minus 3xn squared minus xn plus 5, everything over. 6xn plus 1. Um, this will be 6xn squared minus 3xn squared, which will be 3xn squared. Then minus plus 6n minus 6n will go. So we shall have plus 5 out of 6xn plus 1. They want us to use it twice. Remember, we have got our initial approximation as x naught is equals to 1.10. So if we are to get x1, we shall just put into this 3 into 1.1 squared plus 5 over 6 into 1.1 plus 1. Uh, this one here will give us the first approximation, and the first approximation will be 1.3. 1.13 double five, double five. They want us to correct the answer to two decimal places, meaning that the error is 0 0.0005. So uh, since they want us to correct, to, uh, since they want us to operate twice, I may not be interested in the error. I'm going to perform the other iteration which will be 3 into now 1.1355 squared then plus 5 out of 6 into 1.1355 plus 1. Performing that iteration is going to give you 1.1350. 1 so but they want the answer to decimal places, therefore the root is 1.14 to decimal places, as simple as that. I told you that the easiest method of computing very fast is to put this formula in your calculator, and then you start solving for the values of x. But on the paper, you have to show how you have substituted. 
that is it. Or else, or else one can alternatively do like this because um, our f of xn, one can alternatively do this, f of xn has been a 3x squared n plus x minus five. Uh, since they had not told us to prove the formula, one can do otherwise. So the derivative was six xn plus one. Now, um, one can, uh, you know, xn plus one, is the same as xn minus f of xn out of 6xn, no, 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 out of the derivative of xn. Implying that if they want us to use it twice, okay, if they want us to use it twice, uh, we need to find out uh, if we take x naught as 1.10, as suggested before, mean that look for f of x naught, which is 1.1. .1. So you'll say three, 1.1 .1 squared plus 1.1 .1 minus five, then also get the derivative of 1.9, sorry, 1.10. You're going to substitute into the derivative, which will be six into 1.1 .1 plus one. So you'll get the value here, you get the value here. Now, having gotten all this, having gotten all this, uh, we'll, now you'll bring into this formula so that your x1 would be equal to xn, now it will be x0, which will be 1.1 .1 minus the value you've gotten here out of the value you've gotten here. So you put the value you've gotten, out of the value you've gotten. Now, this will give us x1. Then, after getting x1, you, since they didn't want you to check the error, they want you to do two only, you go directly to the second one. But for the second one, we're going to look for f of that x1 now, the value of x1 which you've gotten. You also get f prime of x1. Then you substitute again and you get the answer. So still that one can work. That one also can do work. All right. So the main important thing, uh, the main important thing uh, would be practicing much of differentiation so that you can work on the formulas very, very well, practicing more of the differentiation so that you can work on the formulas very well. They can ask you a question to show that iterative formula based on NLM for solving in x plus x minus two equals to zero is given by xn plus one equaling to xn into three minus in xn over one plus xn. For n is zero, one, two, etc. So uh, this one is not any hard from whatever we've been looking at, only that the main thing is differentiation. Most of these questions, you need to be very technical with as far as differentiation, right? So you need to just know how to differentiate these functions. We shall keep doing many examples as we progress. But for this case uh, of such a function, if you're given f of xn as lean xn plus xn minus two, 
then the derivative of xn will be when you differentiate lean xn, you get one over xn. Then plus when you differentiate xn, you get one and when you differentiate it, you get a zero because it's a constant. So this is the same as one plus xn after taking the LCM over xn. Looking at this, you can bring it in your formula, xn plus one is xn minus f of xn out of the derivative of xn. Substituting, you give you xn minus f of xn, which is in xn plus xn minus two out of the derivative, which is one plus xn out of xn. So this is the same as, this is the same as xn minus, now this is divided here, it's like you divided by one plus xn of xn, so reciprocal, bring xn up, then lean xn plus xn minus two, everything over one plus xn. So looking at all this, you can now expand this. And of course, by taking the LCM, it's going to be xn into one plus xn minus xn lean xn uh, minus xn squared, then plus, of course, two xn. Looking at this here, everything is over one plus xn. Here, uh, we shall say that this is xn plus xn squared minus xn in xn minus xn squared plus twice xn. Everything is over one plus xn. xn squared, xn squared will cancel and xn plus two xn will be three xn. So let me say three xn minus xn in xn over one plus xn. xn being common, I can factorize it out so that I get xn into three minus lean xn out of one plus xn. So as simple as that, you can prove it. So we shall keep looking at such functions and uh, my other examples are going to include some many more other numbers where even we shall extend it to graphical method of the, uh, determining the root of the equations. I wish you the best. So what we are left with is now the graphical part, and then we go to the flow charts and we call it numerical methods. Wish you the best.